Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Mills here. Pub Sports Radio. Do you guys want to challenge the personalities here on Pub Sports Radio? Do you guys think you're better than them at entering in your MMA predictions and picks? Would you want to get paid for it? $100? Here's how you do it, man. You sign up right here at the link below. It's just this easy. PubSportsRadio.com. Enter your email. Pick your weekly picks. That's it. Oh, and you get bonus points if you can predict how they're going to win and what round. Every single week, a new winner is getting crowned. So every Saturday on Pub Sports Radio. So come on and check us out. You can win $100 just for signing up. Only thing you need to do is see if you can beat us here at Pub Sports Radio by entering your UFC predictions and picks weekly. Do it. I dare you. See you guys soon. What's up, everybody? This is Big Show Picks, host of the Locker Room Podcast. This week, I'm in the locker room with the boys covering UFC Denver. Mills, how was Vegas last week? I'm going to start with you. How was Vegas last week? How'd you end up doing? And what was the recap like? Man, Vegas was uh, Vegas was good. You know what I mean? Went out there for International Fight Week with Wifey. Um, you know, uh, as far as the fights and everything. The fights wasn't it, man. I wasn't too much entertained watching them and stuff like that, uh, you know. But as far as the bets, the bets was it. I mean, I think I lost two bets on the on the whole night. That's just how we do in Vegas. I lost with Silva and I lost with uh, main event uh, Yuri in that one. Best bets though. I mean, Ian Gary minus one thirty. Jeez, come on now, man. I mean, it was just looking like a gift out there. Uh, but besides that, though, I mean. I couldn't really complain too much. Seeing um, who did I see? Seeing Colum, um, the the famous boxer, Colum, uh, I forget his name, the guy that's dating um, Tabitha Tabitha Ricci. Ricci. Yeah, yeah, Ricci. yeah. <laughs> seeing him out there. Uh, let me see. That was really about it. That I I think uh, you know. But besides that, yeah, man, had to go out to Vegas for the week. Back recharged, ready to go. Billy Briz, how'd you do last week or the week prior? Yeah, week prior was uh, really, really good. You know, nice little uh, UFC pay-per-view event. I will say, like, good betting perspective, but in terms of scale of, like, international fight week events, that's got to be the lowest ever on the scale. That was probably one of the worst international fight week events. That felt like a fight night <laughs> type of vibe the whole entire night. But, I mean, shouts to Dan uh, Ige, 50K Ige, stepping in on short notice. That was a dope little story. But uh, I got banged up on that Saturday, man, this past Saturday with no UFC. You know it's a bad day when the boarded soccer bets are like the profit of the day. I got banged up everywhere else, man. I got banged up on the Lakers. I got banged up on uh, WNBA picks. It was like a, uh, man, uh, no UFC on Saturday. Bill's chilling the fuck out. Uh, one, one, F- one championship, though, last, uh, last Friday. Good promotion, man. Good promotion. They're they're definitely doing things that are innovative, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they become more popular in American markets within the next couple of years. DC, what about you? What was the recap like for you, and how was your week off? First and foremost, what is up, boys? I am super stoked to be back. Definitely needed that break, but I do feel refreshed, man. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to the whole fucking pub, man. Everybody that will watch the premiere later, the chat, everybody. I hope y'all uh, had a good week off. I'm trying to forget all the fuck about UFC 303 because your boy got fucking wrecked. So I'm going to just get fucking Rocky Mountain High. We got UFC Denver, and I'm going to cook up another uh, cook up another winning parlay, get back on track. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm pumped to get into this card and, uh, and see what's really good. All right, I'm going to kick it back over to Mills. But first, let's shout out uh, the winner from last week's podcast, Resisting It All 1, scored 755 points. Shout out to you, brother. But Mills, you got, uh, what's the word on the street? Any MMA news to quick fire get out of here? Yeah, man. So, you know, everybody's talking about this new event that they got going on at the UFC Sphere in September. And, man, I, I got to tell you this. While I was staying at our hotel, had a view of the Sphere the whole time. That thing is crazy, man. Uh, speaking of it, though, you already got some fights I got announced out there. And one of the fights I got announced, man, I'm torn on it. I don't know which way to go. My man, Anthony Hernandez, is taking on Michelle Pierre, you know. And then those are two fighters that I've been betting on and back, and they whole fucking career. 
as far as Pierre. Fluffy got on him a little bit later, but Pierre, I never went against him once. Now I'm in a position of where, man, oh man, I don't, I don't even know, man. But nine times out of ten, I'm probably going my boy Fluffy to win. Um, but besides that, you know, you got some other fights I got announced for that card. None yet. That's like, you know, have you salvating though? But I'm gonna just throw this out there, man. I'm hearing that the paperwork's been signed for Sugar Shine O'Malley to take on Marab Divashali. And I've been hearing rumblings of Conor McGregor taking on Michael Chandler at the Sphere too. Um, and it kind of makes sense because Dana White said he already spent $18 million on advertisement and stuff on the Sphere. Who you think's covering that? I think them writer boys out there. So, you know, I think the, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia fans, they want to see Conor McGregor in the Sphere. I think that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and say it here, man. I think the main event's going to be Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. I think the co-main event's going to be Sugar Sean O'Malley. Uh, versus uh, Marab Divashali, and I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see if you would if we if we see Alex uh, Alexa Grasso on the card as well. Right on, right on. All right, we're gonna start a new segment. Both the boy, all the boys didn't really like this pre flop, but let's give it a little shot. I'm gonna ask them three fights. All I want is their first three words they that they think of. They don't gotta. You can get creative with it if you want to take some time. But Mills, starting with you. What was your reaction to the Nate Diaz George Masvidal boxing match? Three words. Yeah, first I mean, three words that, that come to your head. Great boxing match. Billy could care less. TC <laughs> didn't watch it. <laughs> you, there you go. Right, I'll start with you. I'll start with you on this one first, TC. Um, picture this UFC 306, just like Mills was talking about in the spear. I'm hearing rumblings of Ilya Taporio versus Max Holloway. What would be your thoughts on that fight if that happened in the spear on that loaded card that Mills was just talking about? Ilya Taporia, Max Holloway in the sphere. That, Three words. Let's fucking go. Billy. No fucking way. Mills. And still champ. There you go. All right. Another another rumbling that I heard that if Connor was to postpone that first fight, that we might end up getting, well, according to Chael Sonnen, we might end up getting Michael Chandler versus Islam Makachev. Billy, first thoughts on that? Islam smash fest. <laughs> that shit would not be competitive. A couple more words, but TC. What, what is it now? Uh, Islam and uh, Islam Michael Chandler. If uh, McGregor isn't able to fight Chandler, uh, and they're trying to get Chandler a fight before the end of the year, it'd be in Abu Dhabi. Don't hate it, Mills. Um, not this Who herb. has the best wrestling? <laughs> All right. All right. Not that bad. You guys did not do terrible at it at all. It was very fine. Uh, time for the new segment. <laughs> nah, fuck that. If y'all watching this right now and if y'all like that segment, put right now in the comments, man. Thumbs up or thumbs fucking down for that shit, Bro, man. that should have been the OnlyFans segment. Man. We had the OnlyFans segment. It's the all right, now we're back with Billy's segment from last week. Everybody kind of enjoyed it. It's not Planko. <laughs> it's his MMA version. It's something we're trying to do. Um, these lines that I that I pulled from are from my bookie. If you want to head over, use promo code Post Sports. Receive a fifty percent match on credit card, hundred percent match on Bitcoin. First fight I want to talk about. I'll start with you, TC Montel Jackson at minus one fifty five versus Damian Blackshear at plus one thirty. Is the price right? And what side are you right. on? I think the so so we want for it. Do I think the price is right? Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, because I am on Montel Jackson, and I like Montel Jackson a lot in this spot. And yeah, I think the price is right. Now, Dude. obviously, Gee, yeah, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say, if no, you no, like Blackshear, you like Blackshear, you are getting him at a dog price. Which I think has a, a, even a little more money's coming on Jackson now, so the price for Blackshear is a little bit better. It's a little bit chalkier now for Jackson, but yeah, I think the price is right. Montel Jackson, let's go. Billy, 
Yeah, one of those tricky fights where uh, I, I can't remember the, Mont- the last time Montel Jackson was like straight bettable range. Like he's always like a big favorite in fights. Um, on paper, it feels like a stylistic matchup that could probably cause him problems. But in reality, fuck picking a side. Fight goes the distance. Man. <laughs> I don't care what the number is, bro. As long as it's not like above minus 200, bro, I'm probably bad. Fight goes. Mills, your thoughts is the price right? Uh, yeah, man. The price is right on a few of these fighters out here, man. I like the Gene Silva fight versus Drew Dober. Pretty much opened up a pick em. Now money's coming in on Dober. It looks like we're going to be able to get Gene Silva at a little bit of plus money on here. Um, you know, so I actually think the price is right on both those fighters, though. Uh, the only thing is this. It's like, who do you really feel more trustworthy bet than me? I'm going with Gene Silva in that spot. I kind of picked him in all the fights that he were going to be fighting in the UFC besides William Gomes. Glad that fight didn't happen. You know, he didn't take that loss. But I think that's one where the price is right. Um, Another one, man, Jasmine just the vicious plus 100 versus Fatima Kaline. Man, that girl is a beast. Klein is making her UFC debut from the Dana White Contender Series is where she was supposed to be fighting at. But I'm a big fan of hers. I think the price is right on Jasmine Jadavicious, man. I think plus money on her, you got to go that way. And uh, like I said, um, I'm a big guy who likes uh, Klein. You know, uh, the inner circle has been on her for a while now. So uh, she's been in the ear. But Jasmine, she's a dog out there. And she ain't going out there to lose at all. So I think the price is right on uh, those two fights. What about the Montel Jackson Blackshear one? So, uh, yeah, I'll be honest. Hell yeah, dead on. Price is right. Uh, usually got Montel Jackson minus 500, you know, uh, what, 13 and two, only two losses, I want to say. Um, you know, this is what I call coming from a projects to a prospect, and that's Montel Jackson right there. Uh, but in the same thing, you know, the price could be right on DeMond Blackshear, too. I mean, plus money on him, you know, and I actually think he has ways to win this fight as well. So this is one to where it's kind of like, it's hard to pick them, and I'll be honest. Yeah, it is hard not to bet Montel Jackson minus 150, and you're just like minus 145, like straight or get uh. But hey, man, I actually like the dog in that one, but um, yeah, so I think all those uh fighters right there, the price is right on uh, both sides. I want to second quick, what before, said. go ahead, go ahead. I was thinking what Mill said about Dober and John Silva, too. I mean, it, it's a fucking pick them now, so pretty much, I, th- I think the last time I looked at it anyway, it was like minus 110 a piece, so like, yeah. It's either, if you're on the John Silva side, the train keeps rolling. You're getting him at a, like a pick 'em price, almost dog money. And Drew Dober, you're getting. If you think Dober wins, probably you know it's by knockout or at least hurting him. So like you're getting that at fucking you know even money pretty much. So yeah, I, I like that too, man. I think the price is right on that. Billy, one. you want to touch on that fight real quick? I mean, there's not really too much to really say about it. I mean, I feel like everything that we really need to know about the fight isn't stuff that we can really predict this early in the week i kind of want to see how gene silva clearly missed weight the last fight that kind of made the market move now he's going on a fight two weeks later and it's up a weight class against drew dober who's probably the hometown fighter i mean i think gene silva's probably gonna win but it's not something that like i'm looking to run to the betting window with let's move to another pick em real quick josh Fram versus andre petrosky tc you think the price is right on that one too Minus 110 each. Is Minus 110 each. Yeah, that's a fight that I really just want to stay away from. I feel like a lot of people are counting like Petrosky out, and I get I get why. I mean, the dude got knocked out by a fucking crash into someone's hip. Uh, but um, and the cardio concerns, <laughs> obviously, Petrosky at, at, at in Colorado, you're gonna like you know, I get it, but it's just it's kind of one that, yeah, if, if you like Frim, yeah, the price is definitely right. Um, I'm staying away from it, though, personally. But, yeah, as far as the segment, yeah, if you like Josh Frim, pretty pretty fucking good, man. But Petrosky is like for, – Frim has, does not have good takedown defense, and I could see Petrosky greasing one out if he doesn't get finished. But I don't know, man. It's probably like Frim sub. So, yeah, price is right. Billy, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, uh, one of the little exercises that I kind of did throughout my uh, off time, uh, you know how much I bet basketball and fights. Those are like really the two sports that I bet on the most. Uh, One thing, one measure, or I should say one statistic that Kempom uses for college basketball that I thought that could be really interesting to start incorporating in MMA is the luck scale rating. Uh, Sometimes in Kempom, you can kind of look through like the Kempom luck scale ratings and see like what teams are being 
or getting unlucky, maybe blowing a lead, somebody got hurt, foul trouble, referee things. And I feel like I kind of want to start incorporating that type of theory into MMA. And uh, this is a perfect fight card to do it. I think Andre Petrovsky probably had some of the two most luckiest draws in MMA history in his last two fights. The dude literally was dominating Jacob Malkoon that whole entire first round, then ran into the hip and fucking lost, got knocked out by running into somebody's hip. The fight before that, he was literally on vacation overseas. His manager called him on said, yo, do you think you can get to Vegas in under a fucking week and fight Michelle Pereira up away? Club? And he took the fight, got knocked out. Um, I feel like Petrovsky's kind of just grading out really bad on like just unluckiness. Uh, I feel like the market's kind of being under uh, his market right now is being undervalued. The last time we seen Petrovsky this undervalued was against Nick Maximov, and he was like a plus three hundred underdog, and he finished him in the first round. I think that Josh Frum's the hometown fighter, but I think Petrovsky gets enough takedowns to uh, either get a submission early or squeak out a decision. Mills, what's your thought on this one? Do you have any plays? And is the prices right at minus at a pick on minus one thing? Man, I'm sorry, bro. I was ignoring half the shit y'all was saying right now, man. So <laughs> as y'all y'all know before the podcast going on, man, I got some shit going on, on my Twitter, right? So all of a sudden I'm trying to log in and it shows me on Pub Sports Radio, MMA locker room just like the message. I'm like, bro, how how did somebody like a message with my all right, man? Back to this, man. I can't sign in Twitter. All right, so the price is right on these fights right here. Man, I don't care about the price on this Josh Fran Petrowski fight. I can't trust neither of these fighters in there. Grappler versus grappler. Let me guess. You got Frem fighting in his backyard, his hometown, everything like that. Frem's a bum. I ain't I ain't impressed. Yes. Petrowski, the dude is actually good. I actually think Andre Petrowski is good. Throw away those last two fights. Throw him away, all right? And, and, and look at it, what he was doing before that. I just think he got with a girl right now that ain't treating him right, doing him right. Something done changed in this man's life, man. But uh, he was the guy that was taking out Nick Maximov and stuff like that and looking good, looking gassed in fights, but still winning against a Chinese dude that I remember early on. So I'm not mm -hmm. here to say that Petrovsky's done. Fuck that. Give me Petrovsky in this spot. What's the next one? Cody Brandage Alassan. Cody Brown Judge is a plus 135. Hell yeah, I got a bet on this, man. I played him straight money line, minus 150. Look, listen, hear me out. He was almost in the Alonzo Menfield category for me to where I could just never bet at him, had to unfollow him. Why? Because we bet this guy big time when he was a big favorite, minus 250 against a lot of people, and he lost. But this is a fight to where he's training now at a different gym, at Team Elevation or something like that. And he's not just a one-round fighter no more. I actually think... Abdul's going to get the finish late round two. I bet him straight minus 150 in here. Um, And when it comes down to it, Cody Brennage is a is is an okay fighter. But uh, okay against somebody who has violence in every single pep punch? Give me that all day, Abdul. Billy, your thoughts um, on the Cody Brennage fight? To be honest with you, I'm um, – kind of on the fence of it i can't believe i'm really going to say this out loud to the public but i think cody brundage wins this fight uh, i think that's the value side hometown fighter trains in Del denver uh, i think he's going to have the better cardio than now zul azak alisson alisson since that uh rape allegation thing that happened to him and uh right before covid he's been two and five bro he does not look fucking good he's looked old uh, granted, he might look physically back, but bro, I don't think his mental's there, man. He's just not mentally there in these fights. Like, remember how easy Body Bags was able to pick him up, up against the cage, throw him down to the ground, ragdoll him, and get that submission? Like, I, you're telling me that isn't in the cards to play right here? I don't think Claudio Ribeiro is that good. That's kind of like a short, stocky type of guy. Alexio de Chirico, as soon as that fight was over, he got cut from the UFC. Uh, Jacqueline Buckley was able to take him down five times. Jacob Mount Coon was able to take him down eight times. Manir Laziz was able to take him down four times. Uh, the theme and story here, I think Cody Brundage is going to be able to take him down, work his wrestling, uh, not pull fucking guillotine. Maybe that's the concern. I don't know. But you're telling me that Cody Brundage is plus money against Abdul Izak Alassane in his hometown? I don't know, man. Uh, I feel like sometimes I kind of, when I think about fights, I try to think about like that UFC episodes uh, that they have that new series on Roku. Like, what are the boys saying, Nick Bader and fucking Dana White? What are, what's the matchmaker saying? You know what the matchmaker said? Hey, we got to, you know, give Cody Brundage a nice little fight in his hometown. He took that one for the team for Bo Nickel. The book 
his money went over one and a half, and Bo Nickel still got his submission. What more do you want from a fight from that? Right. So I think there's a bounce back spot. This should be a pick em. Cody Brundage is the value side, in my opinion. All right, quick question before we move on to 2C. What part of that can't you believe you were going to say? Because that was like three minutes. If You <laughs> like, uh, you kind of rambled on through that whole shit. I don't know what you weren't trying to say. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm saying no, that. I, got I got the point. I got the point. Look, look, look. Billy got excited, but I, yeah. I, I got, no, no, no. <laughs> this is what it is. The, Billy is a guy who hates Cody Brennage. So for him to actually give him out and say, I think he's the value side is I got the point. Like he's actually saying, Hey man, I would bet on Cody Brennage on here. And he's the number one guy who goes against him and hates him and says F him and this and that. So for him to pick him right now, all right, he's doing his. I, 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 I remember Billy put out a tweet saying that if I was racist and all that, I was on last time. That show was hilarious. In the bar, that show was hilarious. But TC, what are your thoughts on the Brennage Alazan fight? You gentlemen, broke it down. You, you gentlemen broke it down beautifully, so I can't really add a whole lot to it as far as a breakdown. Look, if if Judo Thunder wins this fight, it is going to be by just a devastating fucking knockout. And I think that can absolutely happen. But like everything Billy said about the Cody Brundage side is right too. So just purely from a betting perspective, I think the price is right on Cody Brundage. Um, it feels like a Brundage or pass spot, but... I mean, I guess, like, yeah, if Alassane does win this fight, I think it's going to be just sparking Cody Brunges the fuck out, and that'll clear whatever the fucking line is now for him. So, yeah, another one where, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of riding the fence. Like, like I think it's Brundage or pass, but I'm, I've am i just been tempted. Like, I, I've just been – the Cody Brundage side has been, like, reaching out to me, dude. It's been it's been calling to me. I haven't I haven't reached out and, and, and taken it yet, but I feel like that's kind of what I'm heading towards if I'm going to do anything. but. Yeah, the price is right, for sure. Speaking of the price is right, good job, guys. Here it comes. It's the price is right. Joey from New Jersey, what's up, man? What you got going on for UFC Denver? Hey, man, what's up, everyone? Uh, I hope everyone had a good last card. You know, we had a nice little break, but guess what? We back in the fucking rhythm. And one thing I told y'all, if you guys been watching since I've been on, I may have lost my first fight, but what I say, I'm on a two-fight win streak. And guess what? I'm going for number fucking three. I went for a dog last week, and guess what? I'm going for another potential dog this week, depending on how the lines look. I got Andre Petrosky. People are really hating on him. As my boy Billy said, he fought Barrera short notice. He was winning Malcoon before that wicked old headbutt. But guess what? He's forgotten. He's the more well-rounded fighter. He's going to take him down, and it wouldn't shock me if he ends up getting the finish within the first two rounds. Petrosky is going to make people realize why he's a bad motherfucker on the fucking ground. There you go. Joey coming in here playing his flag on Petrosky. Black belt, baby. They don't have those on. up to every. <laughs> uh, Quick question. Up, Joey. Hey, can, I, can I ask go you ahead. a question? Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people that are – on the other side are going to say, oh, well, you know, Petrosky has cardio issues, blah, 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 blah. So as a Petrosky backer, what would you like to see more? Would you like to see him, like, have a, a comprehensive, like, be, like, show he's the better grappler? Or do you want to see him just go down there, like, smash him, get him to give up the the neck or whatever, and just get a, get a quick finish? Like, what, what would you, what do you think is the smart game plan for Andre, given that this fight's at elevation? So since his fight is at elevation, and from what I heard from one of his teammates, actually, he's been now he's been down there a whole another week, almost two weeks ahead, preparing for this, getting his cardio right. And all honestly, I hope he goes in there and shows, look, I'm still the bad motherfucker that I know I am. I hope he goes right to his grappling, bread and butter. Uh, Frem got like a 31 percent takedown defense. He's a fish off his back. And to me, I may not be no pure grappler, but I know Andre is a black belt. And to me, there's something called levels to this shit. And it wouldn't shock me if Petrosky ends up getting a sub at one point. Billy PC. Real quick, while we still got you on the line, I'm going to ask a question and then we'll go around the board again. Uh, what do you think about this rescheduled fight, the Josh Van uh, Carl's Johnson fight? Honestly, that fight could be potentially one of the fights of the nights. I think both guys are going to let it swing in the feet. And 
both guys take down defenses are a little bit iffy to an extent, but it wouldn't shock me if towards the end of the round somebody tries to mix in a takedown, try to secure the round. But nah, bitch, so we'll get to that when the main event comes. It'll be better. But as a whole, I do think I got Van though. I think Van got the more volume, the combinations, and I think he'll probably edge out the decision. Anybody else got any questions for Joey while we got him on the line? I love how the pick this week was Andre Petrosky because I'm right there in the camp with uh, the reason why I think he could definitely win this fight. I got him winning round one at a very high clip. I don't give a fuck that Josh Frem's in his hometown. Um, the grappling is somewhat comparable, but the level will be once they start rolling on the ground. Once they start rolling on the ground, that shit's rad. Joey, I got a question for you. All right, yes, so, you know, OnlyFans, right? If there was one fighter fighting on this card who has an OnlyFans account, who's the OnlyFans fate of the fate of the night? Oh, probably Agapova. I think she sucks. I mean, that's what she was. They were trying to get her to do suck, but no. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. In fighting, got you. Oh, okay. Yeah, first, oh, yeah. Okay. Hiya. <laughs> Hiya. All right, thanks, Joey. Thanks, Joey, for the call in. Good luck on your bet this week, and congratulations on hitting two in a row so far. Hey, Time Joey's to make it three. Right. Let's go, Good y'all. Shit, Joey. I like Peace. the graphic, Philadelphia graphic, <laughs> the river. All right, boys. You know what time it is. It's time to roll through this card, starting with the prelims. If we fly over any of your guys's, you know, plant your flags, blacklisted. Go ahead and, you know, spin it out. First fight from Petrosky. We already talked about it a little bit, TC. This one hit the bell, uh, three bells. I don't think so. Nope. Mills. Um, that one's not hitting three. Well, yeah, man, that one's hitting three bells, man. All they know how to do is wrestle and lay on each other. I don't think they're gonna turn it up in this one. Yeah, Billy. No distance. I think Petrosi's gonna be able to get a submission. I thought there he said go. no, did he? <laughs> Jackson versus Blackshear. Talked about it already, Mills. This one going the distance. Oh, man. This one's going the distance, man. Both these guys is tough, man. Tougher than a cheap steak at Sizzler. You know what I mean? Um, And on here, man, shout out to everybody out here. But uh, this is probably the blackest fight of the year, man. Black on black. Black on black on black <laughs> on black. The way it go, man. You bet on black, you're going to come out on top on this one, man. Uh, Martel Jackson uh, spoke on this fight a little bit earlier, but I actually think this is a fight that needs to get spoken on a little bit more for the people now so we could break it down for them to make some money on. Man, you got a good striker, Montel Jackson. You know, one of the guys that's always been a big favorite whenever he fights. Now you're getting him at a decent price to where you can just bet him straight and ain't got to par lamb. DeMond, but this is the thing. Montel Jackson, this dude only fought like once a year. DeMond Blackshear seemed like he was just fighting whenever he can out here. I mean, I think he even fought within like seven or ten days after he fought one other time and, you know, took another opponent, uh, Bautista. When he fought Bautista, had to play on him as a plus money underdog. Didn't look good earlier on, but in that third round, he looked live in there. Didn't do enough to win the decision, but did enough for me to keep on him. Uh, So in this fight in there, man. I actually think this is one of the better fights that got put on this fight on a short notice fight um, that made the card a little bit better. What do you think, Two Cent? Yeah, I talked about it a little bit earlier. I am on the Montel. I, it's probably a decision. I, I think this is one of those where like, I'm hoping, like wishful thinking, I'm hoping for a Jackson knockout. But something's got to give here, boys, because I think this is a great fight. And it's it, Mills kind of set it up a little bit. It's like striker versus grappler. I think Jackson's a, clearly the better striker. He hits harder. He has got at least one knockdown in his last like five or six. And Blackshear has got at least one takedown in his last five or six. Like Montel Jackson's got pretty good takedown defense. Um, but I think Blackshear is the better sub grappler. As a Jackson backer, I definitely don't want to see him underneath like and Blackshear on top. Uh uh-uh, that's that's no bueno. But uh yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and manifest a Montel Jackson knockout here. I think he, I think he will drop Blackshear at least. Um, and yeah, it's a uh, for me it's either a Jackson decision or a KO. Billy, three bells or no? Yeah, not only do I think it's gonna go three bells, I'm actually thinking about going to the betting window with this one going three bells. I feel like the market's kind of being a little bit undervalued with Montel Jackson's knockdown rate, but 
I don't know, man. This fight seems like a low volume split decision. Did Montel win? Did Blackshear come along live? Uh, I don't want to be betting this one pre-flop. I think this is a live bet. Make sure you guys check out that Saturday podcast live here on the channel. Hit that bell notification so you can guys see uh, where some of these live bets are really coming from live on stream and stuff like that because this is definitely a live bet fight. The fight goes the distance, and then you take a shot live here after the second round. All right, I'll start right back with you, Billy Santos, Agapova. Uh, yeah, this is actually one that hits the heart home a little bit. You know, I'm a big Maria Agapova fan, but with that being said, Shorty was on Instagram last month talking about how she was homeless, uh, was asking for her followers or people that have bet on her in the past to cash cap her and uh, throw her some money. She was begging for the UFC to get a fight because her other fight got canceled and she was really broke. So just her making it to the fight is an accomplishment in itself. Uh, she asked for a fight, and she got the fight. I just don't think it's the right matchup. Luana Santos should be able to get a submission in rounds two or three later on in this fight. Um, I think Agapova is going to come out hot, try to get a 50K bonus. That 50K bonus is going to lead Santos to be able to get takedowns, and then the fight kind of gets boring as it goes along, but Santos wins this by uh, – either submission in rounds two or three or a you name decision like 30 27 and i think it's something that we should circle back to at that in the show tc i like agree with almost everything that billy said but i think that uh maria agapova's game plan her coming out hot and heavy early is going to lead to her getting finished i think it's uh i was kind of like man is maria live i'm not going to besmirch her or anything man like she's had it tough enough and uh, she's been going through some shit. So, yeah, like Billy said, like her even making it to this fight and like still being a fighter, I'm a little I'm a little kind of fucking surprised at. But, yeah, give me Luana Santos here. I think she does get the submission. Um, it Like, I think it's going to be kind of sweaty, though. Like, I think Agapova can maybe like drop her. Uh, they're both kind of sloppy on the feet. But, uh, yeah, I, th I think Santos gets a submission in two or three. Twitter Mills, what do you think on this fight? Yeah, um, you know, the betting line pretty much went in favor of Santos. She opened up, I think, minus 270, all the way up to like a minus 370 in here, I think. Um, you guys know the storyline with Agapova. She's been fighting other things inside the outside of the cage. But I'm here to say that none of that shit matters, man. I think she's gonna go in here and I think she's gonna put on a great performance in there. Um, you know, with that being said, I'm not betting her, but I actually think she has way more uh, you know, uh uh possibilities to win in this fight compared to santos um with that said though i did do a two-leg parlay with santos when she was earlier <laughs> <laughs> that's um, such a nice thing to say i love three like it's over but bro like the homeless thing means you're not you're not training that, and, like, that was the most like, mills breakdown ever dude that was cool. fucking awesome nutrition plan what the fuck is her nutrition plan she's lucky to get a meal but all that to say this though when you're a fighter you're a fighter man and like that's something that nothing could take away, no matter if you're homeless or not, man. I mean, yeah, I don't, hear I don't. Me out. we were Damn. talking about a guy sleeping homeless in his fucking car that got cut from the UFC, and he's a million dollar champion at PFL, knocking everybody out. And they love to use that story for Impa every single time. He you were what sleeping in your car, bro? Impa, but Impa lived on a farm and was a worker at the farm part time with him at the gym. So I mean, he Jeez, was that's deep water. Jazavicious versus Klein, Billy. <laughs> this is one me and Cal. Uh, <laughs> shops to my boy Cal. Don't tap podcast. The Canadians. Uh, he just tapped in with all those people in that gym over there in his hometown. And I had to let Cal know, bro. This is right. not the one. Fatima Klein is the one. If Jazz and Jazz and Vicious thinks that she's about to go in here and get these offensive takedowns and start powering these girls she's gonna get a rude fucking awakening uh i'm very familiar with fatima klein main training partner aaron blanchfield uh homies with the uh coach at the gym uh miss uh augustine um over there on ig and uh fatima klein's got that silver fox bjj uh purple belt man not a black belt yet but that's only because of age 
telling you, man, Fatima Klein is the goods. She might be up a little bit of a weight class here. The strength kind of scares me a little bit. But the fact that the line went from plus 200 to minus 125 tells you everything you need to know. I love Jasmine Jasavicious. Love Jasmine Jasavicious. One of my favorite personalities in the game. Uh, one of the people that probably interact with a lot of my posts the most. But um, unless she comes out here and wants to bite down the mouthpiece and strike for 15 minutes, I think that's how she wins the fight. Fatima Klein's a little bit acceptable when she's on her back foot, kind of like a poor man's Aaron Blanchfield. Like when you see Aaron Blanchfield lose, that's how Fatima Klein usually loses. But uh, I think Fatima Klein's better everywhere here, man. Uh, fight goes a distance. She wins a 29-28 decision. Mills, I've heard you bring up this name quite a few times. What's your thoughts? Yeah, man. Billy hit it on the nail, man, on that one. Everything he said about Klein is accurate in here. Man, I was going to war with her on the Dana White Contender Series or in her up-and-coming fight. Then when she got this ball, I was like, okay, cool. You know, she's going to be like a big underdog taking on short notice. Seen the line come out, and I was like, hmm. Start doing that stupid shit. Start thinking about maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe maybe she didn't fight the people that she needed to fight. Maybe this, maybe that. Yeah, Jasmine, I seen her fight, seen her do this, seen her. Man, fuck that shit, man. I'm on Klein in this spot, man. Billy just said the shit that got me back to the reassurances, man. When we spoke about this fight, I was saying the price is right. Price is right on both these fighters on there. And it's one of those to where if you're getting Klein right now at that pick and price, minus 115, now she's closing out of minus 120, minus 125, you're probably not going to get her that low again in her second fight in here. She's going to be able to isolate some of the things that Jasmine does great, and that's going to be, uh, you know, lower leg kicks in there. She's not going to be want to be taken down. We're talking about a former CFFC champion, whatever that promotion Ooh. is out there. Seen her fight like once or twice in there, but this is why I know about her because the people in my little inner circle, They've been talking about her, man, since I've been talking about Austin Bashi coming up, you know, that's fighting on the Dana White Contender Series. So I got to go with her, man. I think she's the goods. I think she's going to get it done, man. And just like Billy said in here, man, um, she's she's it. You know what I mean? Um, she, she has a lot to improve on still, you know, with uh, the fight resume and can improve a little bit more on the striking. But I think she's going to be able to get Jasmine to the vicious down. And let's go ahead and get it, man. Third round sub. Well, I don't know if there's any words left to help this fight out, TC, but what do you think? I'll tell you what. I was very impressed uh, with what I saw on tape from Fatima Klein, and it scared me off the Jasuda Vicious side, but I think this does hit the cards, and it's going to be the greasiest fucking split you ever seen in your damn life before. That's all I got on. Right on. That, Josh, that right. Josh right. Josh right. Distance is definitely the uh, safe bet. But but what Billy said was literally like he just I was like all right cool I was like yeah exactly because those are my inner thoughts and shit so I was like why am I gonna stop and change it now because I think that the price and you know this and that and I'm like nah man I already right. got that saying stick bro, to me and that. Cal had this argument yesterday bro I said bro no, Jasmine no. Jason Vicious tries to wrestle bro she's gonna get a rude awakening in round one like that shit is not there like I, I think I think Klein has like a crispy one too I like what I see from her on the feet I I, I do not like Jasmine striking but like Jasmine gets takedown like she I don't know Jasmine gets get, takedowns and she she's gonna have downs and Jasmine like, throws long. This is what, what what has me hung up on this and what has me passing on it is like uh they obviously think decently highly of this Klein chick to just give her just suit of vicious right off the rip like it's a bit of a step up so I I think I'm slightly leaning Klein like I think she wins a split decision but like yeah I think it's going to be a decent test for her. Man, this we're there. Is those, we're, 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 this is one of those cases where a fighter takes a fight from their manager and they say, I don't give a fuck who it is. And then they look at the fight and they're like, fuck, this is a harder fight than the actual original fight I was supposed to have. Yeah. Well, we're officially out the window, folks. Minus 120, I got in. It opened up minus 115 on my book. Um, you know, um, but I just added it to the list, like I said on there. Um, it's and it took this right now to convince me a little bit more, you know, because um 
Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did because I was I was probably going to make a bet on Jasmine, you know, and just thinking and be like, try to outsmart myself. That's the worst thing you guys can do sometimes in this shit. Yeah, try it's more like question marks on Klein. It's like, I like I loved what I saw. It's just like, I, I need to see a little bit more before before I, my fucking nutsack will drop on that. But yeah, I, I think she's it's the better. It's crazy, though, Sands. I feel like all my questions for the fight is nothing like fight related. It's like her moving up a weight class on short notice. Like, those in are the Denver, questions. at That's elevation. Cool. Yeah, when it comes to the oh, film, you guys, if you can, hurry up, take draw first. Fuck. Okay, let's go. France and Spain is kicking off, boys. Let's go, man. Draw first half is the play. Draw full game, too. Ben versus Charles Johnson, a.k.a. Rip Hamilton sometimes. Man, and this fight right here is a dog fight, man. That's what I'm saying. Some of the short notice fights that I got uh, on this card made this card a lot better. This is one. Uh, the Drew Dober versus uh, Silver fight is another one. The Jackson versus Blackshear is another one right here, man. This one, you got Joshua Van, like minus 220 on the books. You know how it is. He yeah, was supposed to be fighting, uh, what, who was it? Uh, Tashir Tara. Then they canceled that. Then he was supposed to be fighting Ulan Bekoff or Ty Gear. They canceled that. Whole thing is, man, he's been canceled more than Diddy in the last couple of months, man. Charles Johnson, uh -huh. he's been adding up his value. You know what I mean? He's been showing people, I belong in the UFC. This is a guy that I followed before he got to the UFC. Two-time, uh, two-weight uh, champion in the LFA, man. And I, I used to like him. He used to have a little ducktail in the back and everything, you know, out there putting on. Right. And then we got... He got to the UFC. He just didn't fight the same way all the way through. But in this one, man, I think this one goes the distance. And I actually like the dog in this one, man. Give me the dog, man. Uh, yeah, man, I think the money on Charles Johnson is going to be too enticing for me to look the other way. And, hey, man, he's going to get us paid. So if you're trying to get your money, put your money on Charles Johnson. Dog of the day to get you paid. Billy. I'm not as convicted as Mills, but uh, my quick little rant for this fight is, uh, man, the, compared to the rest of these sports, bro, how the fuck is MMA still in the premature stages of, like, media? The fact that we have to, like, watch YouTube videos of, like, people with, like, 3K subs to get fight information and watching the R-Star channel, uh, the Asian dude that does the interviews, he did an interview with Joshua Van four days ago about uh, – own the Charles Johnson fight, the Tagir Ulian Bekov weight uh, miss, and the Mikhaev cap alleged attack. And it was one of the most insightful fucking interviews I've heard because you know when you're like 22 and you're like young and dumb. Hey, and Billy, we got a podcast to do. I'm just saying, this is really good. This is really good inside information, Mills. You can suck my dick for all I care. No! Uh, he was talking about how he was like there partying he goes. And stuff ah, when his manager say, called him and said, uh, do you want to take this fight against Charles Johnson? He said, yeah, sign me up. Bro, it didn't sound like homie was training at all. Like, if you listen to anybody's breakdown about Joshua Van throughout the week, remember I said this. Everyone says, man, he improves from fight to fight. He's getting better. Man, we're only going to see the best of Joshua Van. Maybe the fuck not, bro. We're going to see the same exact dude that we just seen in the last fight. Homie was drinking, partying, getting, chilling out, and then his manager called him and said, yo, you're fighting Charles Johnson. He said, yeah, give me the fight. I don't know, man. It made me not – for minus 200, it made me definitely stay away from watching the interview. I don't make all my bets based off of interviews, but that one was like a nugget that I'm going to keep in the back of my head for this week. Uh, homie was definitely not training for this fight. Is it going the distance, Billy? Yeah, you're damn right, bro. But both fighters start up. But when do All both right, fighters TC, start finish this off? <laughs> Pass me on there. God damn, cut that shit off pretty fucking quick. Um, I bet it's too early. Probably, I had to get it. <laughs> one of the most interesting fights on the whole entire prelim. It, it is, though. It is, though. So on that, yeah. though, look. So you don't believe that betting him at those odds is, is warranted because he's just been, like, not really taking the fight serious? No, it's uh, just both fighters are slow starters. So right off the bat, if both fighters aren't reliable in round one, they both come on late, what the fuck am I supposed to expect? Like, that every dude, time I watch – really, like, that, that, that segues perfectly – that segues perfectly into my take on this fight. Much like the last one. I think this one is going to the cards. I think it's going to be a greasy fucking split, but I think it's going to be a much better version of that previous fight. Like, I think it's going to be a good yeah. fucking fight where it's like, like Billy said, they're slow starters, but once they get into their groove, they both start to, you know, look pretty good on the feet. Like, I, 
it's one of those where I, yeah, and they both come on strong late in the fight. They're both probably going to have a good third round. It's in Denver, so it's really going to be like whose cardio is better. Um, but so I do we think it goes, the goes to distance, right? I do. I do think it goes the distance. Yep, for sure. That I, goes back though, Mills. It's to a the split. I think it's a split. I think it's another split where it's like it's, but it's fucking weird, man. I'm gonna pick Van. Not confident that I'm. I'm gonna Johnson. My respect for Johnson is gonna and his experience <laughs> is gonna keep me away from the window. Kind of like a couple of other fights where it's like I'm on the other side, but it's like I'm gonna pass just because like I do think Charles Johnson is live. I think Van lands a couple more of the more like more telling kind of round stealing strikes, but I think it's gonna be a good one. I think it's cards. So Bill, anybody so got Bill's anything else to wrap up the prelims real quick? Go ahead, Mills. After anybody got anything to wrap up the prelims before you move on? Go ahead, Mills. Uh, that's not the last fight of the prelims. That's the last one I had. The last fight of the prelims is Cody Brundage uh, duel with Zach Ellis, huh? Well, e- either way, I got that one on. Uh, I think on I think it you- says on topology it says Brundage all is on his main card, but let me. Uh... It's all good. Uh, so look, out of these prelims, I think we should do this for you guys, man. We're gonna do this new thing since we this segment is called "Fight Goes the Distance" or not. We're gonna give you the parlay. Um, two of the fights that we all agree upon that's going the distance is gonna be the uh, Montel Jackson versus Demond Blackshear and the Joshua Van versus Charles Johnson. Go ahead and put those in a two-leg parlay. Fight to go the distance. Uh, meet us at the window and let's get paid. Uh, you can get I'd those. Go, I'd rather go Montel Jackson, Blackshear, and Jasmine Jezevicius Klein both go in the distance. I, I don't see how the Jasmine Jezevicius Klein fight finishes unless Klein gets a submission. Y'all going to be sweating when Montel sits him down. Woo! I'm telling you. <laughs> Moving on to the main card. Or, yeah, the main card according to Tapology. Cody Brundage versus Alassane. Talked about it a little bit already. Mills, why don't you take it off here? Does this hit three bar- Yeah, three bells. Uh hell no, man. This ain't hitting three bells, man. It do hit uh it do hit the second round though in here. So I will be playing second round to start. It's probably gonna be like a nice little decent plus money price tag. Cause why? Because I think Alisson, I think 11 of his first round finishes uh came in the first round uh out of his 13 wins. I don't know, don't quote me like that. Just something I probably heard. Uh, but back to this fight, man. You already know the story with Cody Brunish, man. <laughs> You like that. I keep it real. Hey, but back to this one, man. Everybody's out there coming out there with a Cody Brundage flags, bro. Cody Brundage, the flag of the week, flag of the week. Where was that same energy, man? And all his other fights, man. Now he's fighting one of the guys who's like so violent, man. Give me Abdul Razak Hassan, man. I'm putting my money on him. And I'm going to the window with it. I expect to get paid off of it as well. Like I said, he changed up his camp training at elevation in here. Um, you know, he's one of those fighters that hasn't really put his best foot forward in the UFC yet. Is he gonna do it now? Hell no. Can he beat Cody Brunich? I think so. So meet me at the window and let's get paid. Billy. Y'all don't really want it now. Here comes the ooh. Here comes the boom. Here comes the sub. Y'all don't really want it now. Cody Brothers, man. We rocking with the hometown (laughs) underdog. We're getting a hometown underdog. Sign me up, man. Uh, It's one of those ones where, like, I think I have to sleep on it, though, bro. Like, it's one of those ones, like, something's got to tell me in my sleep, like, Cody Brothers is going to win this fight. But uh, as of right now, here comes the boom. Y'all don't really want it now. <laughs> Cody Brundage here, man, Bot- via submission. Uh, late in this fight, uh, Abdul's going to come out here. Everyone thinks he's going to throw bombs. He isn't going to do shit, man. <laughs> like, he's been watching <laughs> Joe fight for the back, bro. He didn't do anything besides get ragged the whole entire fight. That's how this fight's going to go. Cody Brundage via sub. He's going to get something off of his back here. Fuck the Gilly is going to be a rear naked. Wow. Oh, all right. I, I thought I heard something different. TC. First of all, Mills, I like that hat. I like Thanks. That style. I do like that hat. Se- second <laughs> of all, Billy, damn you for getting here comes the boom. Here comes the boys from the South stuck in my fucking head because that is all is good. Like, I, 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 somebody here comes get another the boys from the South. Like this, I thought, here comes the boom. Like, oh, God damn it. Uh, but no, no, there's no way it hits the cards. Abdul Ra, Abdul Razak Al Hassan is either going to spark Cody Brundage into the next fucking galaxy, or Cody Brundage is going to choke him. It's going to be one of those two things. One of those two things is going to happen. 
I'm going to ride the fence like a little bitch and kind of just, I don't know. I think it's running your pass. I haven't made up my mind. It is what? It's Tuesday at just after 3 o'clock p.m. I still haven't made up my mind. But, yeah, this fight ain't going the distance, boys. Uh Uh-uh. At elevation. I I don't think fight goes. But, man, I can't imagine what the fuck Cody Brundage to win by decision is going to be priced at. Oh, my God. Like, in, if you're a Dutch money sprinkler on a prop type of guy, you got to bet Cody Brundage. Probably a pretty little penny, I reckon. Juliana Rosa, Christian Rodriguez. Billy. Man, this is one where I feel like am – I, am, I, am I, like – Am I underestimating Julian, Juicy J, Arosa? This is a different weight class, but something tells me, man, Christian Rodriguez at minus 230 on this main card, when we look at the fights on Sunday, it's going to look like a really good price tag. Like, it's grading out as, like, what should uh, – you know how I got the model thing for, like, the parlays and stuff? I just – if the, if the sports books are using AI, fuck it. We should be using AI that they don't use. That's my thought process behind it. Uh Chris Rodriguez, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris Rodriguez is popping out as like a good parlay piece leg, uh, especially if the line comes down. It's not like like it's bad line movement, I should say. Like people are betting Julian Rosa, but like tell me how Julian Rosa wins this fight. Other than submission, you should just be betting the submission prop. Does it go the distance? No, Christian Rodriguez inside the distance here. Mills. Uh, I think it's going to finish in round three in here. Uh, yeah, I think Christian Rodriguez is weird, man. They they gave this guy to be, like, fed to everybody in the UFC. They brought him in the UFC to lose, point blank, period. It's just that he didn't do that. You know what I mean? He kept winning and winning and winning. Goddamn, Tucson looked like Sean Strickland. All right, man. But so on this one right here, man, um, <laughs> Christian Rodriguez, man, I actually do think the minus 220 is a decent price tag, you know, in there. Um, I actually think he's probably going to close out of minus 270. But that height on Julian Erosa, it's going to give Christian Rodriguez some problems in there. You know, this is Christian Rodriguez, what, second fight at 145. Um, so we'll see how he gets acclimated to the weight. Juliana Rosa could always surprise people, man. Always surprise people. And it's been a while since he pulled that surprise button out. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he gets the win where everybody's thinking, yeah, Christian Rodriguez, I think he won his last four fights and this now and that. that. Last and- Mills, that last fight, Mills, when he uh, – everybody in his mom was betting Ricardo Ramos and that motherfucker got choked the fuck out in round one. That's my concern. TC? So – yeah, or does it hit the right. does it hit the distance? Does it go the distance? Well, you said third round sub, so third you don't round think you sub. TC. God, this one's fucking with my head, dude. There are so many like fights where the dog seems live, and I just I uh, I just haven't bet it yet, but I really want to bet it. Rose says like, I'm reaching out for it, man. What was it? Plus one seventy now for for Juicy J. It I think he seems live to me because. He like the experience and like like he like y'all said, man. Like when just when you count him out, it's like you, you think he's just gonna get knocked out every fucking fight because you look at his record and you're like, oh, the dude's been knocked out like what seven, eight fucking times. But like, is Rodriguez like is he really that fucking dude? Like I I could see him subbing him, but I think if anybody gets clubbed and subbed, I think it's gonna be Christian Rodriguez, man. Arosa is like he is more powerful than like like he's a glass cannon. The dude does kind of hit hard. Um. I don't know. I, I I just said a lot to say fucking nothing, just jack shit. So let me fucking shut up on this one. It doesn't hit the cards, man. Uh, nah, nah, it doesn't. Rodriguez. But, but, you lean, but you lean a little bit on Julian's side, right? Like from a betting, like if I'm, I'm yeah, not betting, yeah, yeah. I'm not betting this one. It's like, but it yeah, feels yeah. like dog or pass. Pass, for sure. But no, nah, I, I think one of them probably gets finished. Gabriel Bonifin, Lusa, Billy. First up, what's your thoughts? Three bells? There's two sides that I can see in this one. Two a part sides. of me is the parlay boy and thinks that Bomb Theme could just be a good parlay piece and you just kind of just – but I don't know, man. I can't have Luana Santos in parlays and the thought process be Maria Agapova is going to gas late. And then the second leg of the parlay be fucking Gabriel Bomfine and me screaming at the TV, don't gas out late. 
It's like literally the reverse psychology behind both bets. So it's like, I hate to say it, bro, but like a part of me thinks Gabriel Bonfine could win just a mission or decision, or it could be a club and sub type of thing. But fuck, man, Ange Lusa by decision, man, is just going to be looking at me all fucking week, dude. Bonfine third round concerns me that's how he lost the last fight against Dalby and now you're telling me we're going into we're going into fucking elevation that's supposed to give me the warm and fuzzies I mean everyone else thinks it's like uh set in a way Gabriel Bonfine uh could just could this be the part of the night I definitely think it could be if you told me at the end of the week that Bonfine was dominating the first round ended up gassing late versus a fucking European world champion kickboxer who can strike and has been working on his wrestling. I don't know. I think I'm just losing gets taken down. But man, yeah. the later this fight goes, the sketchier this is. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to go under, but it's not – as you could tell by like the way of the breakdown, this is not a this is not a minus four hundred like confident bet. DC, I'm with you, Billy. I, it feels like everyone's just like wants to rush. Oh, Bonfim's just gonna mow right through him. He might, man, but like it would be the first time that Lusa has ever been finished professionally. You the Lazez fights definitely give me pause. Like I know I know they weren't the same kind of fights. Every fight's different or whatever, but. I'm on Bonfim, but I'm scared to like parlay his money line. It feels like if you're confident, uh, Joey said in the chat, Bonfim by sub. I don't hate that. It, it's just weird, man. This is one. Just I just want to pass on it, dude. I just I pick Bonfim and pass. I it just it, it's one of those like I feel like there's a little bit of recency bias, maybe perhaps given the fact that Dolby just lost, and it's like, oh, dude, he beat Bonfim and he just fucking lost. So, but like Lusa, I've never. I've never been super fucking duper high on him. So the idea, like, I don't know. I'm just not that fucking hot on him as a dog either. But I'll say, fuck it. I'll say Bonfim finish, finishes Lusa sub or, you know, some knockout. The last no. one that to this fight was um, the two images. When you say Angelusa, the two images that think in my brain – most recently is the fucking Brian Battle fight that ended in a fucking eye poke contest where Brian Battle was like, yo, you're a bitch. You don't want to fight me. He was clearly losing the fight, got ruled in a contest. That image pops in my head. And then another image, the, I, this is no ditty. We're taking this as a sports betting perspective. The night I fell in love with Jack Della Maddalena on a Dana White contender series when he had the fucking head and arm choke in the middle of the fucking cage. And if that's anybody else in the world with the fucking black belt, that dude's dead. He was literally looked like a fish out of fucking water with his hand above his head like this, looking like he was about to pass out. And he ended up fighting up going to decision. Like, he could definitely get submitted here. Mills. Yeah, so this breakdown, while y'all was doing all that rambling and stuff, I thought of a good analogy and a metaphor to compare Gabriel Bonfim to. Gabriel Bonfim is kind of like this, man. By the way, I got a two-leg parlay with him, and it was with him and uh, Luana Santos earlier on with that shit. But let me get to the uh, metaphor. So I kind of think it's like this. People's mad because of his last fight against Nicholas Dalby or whoever it was. I forget. I think it was him, though, right? But it's like this, man. When you get that one girl and you're supposed to smash, right? You're supposed to break her walls out. You go to the house and you pump a couple of times. You pump a couple of times and you gas out, right? And then, you know, you got to take that. Lord have mercy. I'm about to bust. Same thing happened with Gabriel Bonfin, man. I'm not going to hold it against him, man. All because you pump short one time, that don't mean you pump short all the time, man. I think he gets back on this one. Put that here, on man. a shirt. <laughs> he's gassing out. It doesn't concern you that the fight's in elevation. Like, I mean, dude's gassing out in Brazil. I mean, fuck, man. I mean, that, that look, was great. Look, great this quarter. is even the thing. Let me connect the dots, right? right? So I'm let sure me connect one. the dots. Let me connect this dots in the story and the metaphor and analogy. So, right, you gas out one time, 
And that girl now thinks, oh man, he's he's always like that now, right? No, but she's always gonna think that because of last time you did it that one time, right? And they're gonna hold that against you. But you can win four more fights after that, right? And they're gonna be like, but remember when he lost to Dalby? They're always gonna bring up that <laughs> one time you gassed out, that one time you don't come correct. They're always gonna hold it against you. I think Bob oh, comes. He said the one time you don't come correct after that whole fucking breakdown. Good shit, Mills. That's brilliant. You now come on now man that's, that's a good right. clip i guess a uh, good clip for him there we get t-shirt he said if you pump short the first time oh, i don't even remember what you said go ahead tc you know, my question for you is uh which one do you think on a side note is the better bomb theme brother uh gabriel or ishmael because like ishmael's got the doper fights is gabriel better though I mean, I, I still don't know, man. I mean, it's two different weight classes, too. You know, I, I still think you just got to see those guys get about six, seven fights in the UFC. Drew oh, Dober man. versus Silva. Go Look ahead, man. This, bro. Look, like one guy's going to take your girl. The other guy, you're going to take his girl. <laughs> That's the breakdown. Billy? <laughs> I'm not letting two sets. I'm not letting Cal get my fucking brain on this one. Last time I was like, la, 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 la. I'm just going to walk myself over to the sideline. Don't stop me in. I'll just sit out. I'll just sit on the fucking fence and just let you guys sweat it out. And fuck, do I feel like I missed out on some fucking money because this is the same exact price tag as the Charles Jordan fight. And this is a way harder matchup. And I think the motherfucker's going to win still at yeah. six months. Like, yeah. that's the breakdown. That's the fight. I think Gene Silva wins this fight. I don't care if Drew Dober's in his hometown. This reminds me of, like, the Canada card mm -hmm. on, on the uh, first break after the new year. All the Canadian fighters lost. Like, I don't see a whole lot of Denver fighters winning on this card. Uh, and the ones that I do see winning are, like, plus monies. So, uh, I, I I like Gene Silva here. Um, I think it's going to be – a Ah, he's gonna knock him out, bro. Drew Dover, Drew Dover's durability is definitely uh his biggest flaw in his career. Yeah, that chinny chin chin, it looks good in the models and the magazines, but uh, when that glove touches it, that shit's going down, baby. That shit's going down. And uh I think Drew Dover could be going down in this one. I mean, we've seen him get clipped a lot of times. He came back from some. I don't think he comes back from this one. Fight nerds, uh Jim is just a cash cow, bro. I'm I'm riding with it. I like a lot of the Brazilians on this card this weekend. TC? I don't know shit when it comes to either one of these fucking fighters. I just, I'm just cannot, I, I can't get right with either one of them. Uh, I, but I do think that if there's no fucking way this is hitting the cards. If one of them's getting knocked out. Man, do I keep fucking like fading Jean Silva in my own peril? The dude has been doing nothing but feeding me fucking crow, making me look even dumber than I already fucking look. I think this might be where I keep saying this. Though, I feel, it feels like insanity. Like I feel, I feel like, oh, this is where the rubber's gonna meet the road. I like that that Jean, uh, that last fight, that Charles Jordan fight has got me shook from betting Dober. I do think the price is right. So if you think he wins, yeah, like I'm probably gonna pick Dober. But I think, I think, I think one of them's getting knocked out because this could be one of those where John Silva tries to get Dober up out of there doesn't and then he starts facing a little resistance dober he can weather a fucking storm dude and come back and bring a storm of his own and i don't know if john silva has really like has he's fighting up a weight class on short notice i think if anybody's gonna fucking gig giggity giggity gas out it's gonna be fucking john silva uh so this is a great fight man give me dober by knockout not confident at all. I don't know shit in general, but definitely not when it comes to either of these motherfuckers. But yeah, give me Dover. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add this in there. Uh, this actually hit the uh model for the eight year age gap for uh, you know, like fighters with eight years age gap or whatever. This is one of the ones that popped up for it. I was actually shocked. Uh, it was, this would be the shock fight that hit that shocker. Bro. So it was weird when I when I was looking at this card, first thing I noticed, Rose is on it, you pay her fighter, blah, blah, blah. You're rolling through the card, seeing John Silva again. And I'm, you know, first thoughts of it is like, man, this guy kind of looked good. He like changed my whole opinion on it, you know, the, the way I thought about him last fight in. But now, missing a weight cut, I don't know whether he put weight back on to get up to whatever he got to. And then now, that, that's what I'm saying. Now he's 
it's just another it's just a you know a different fight now it's like two weeks later up in elevation like it's just a patch for me i want to be on the silver side but it is just a patch for me i don't have much fighter input on this card besides maybe the rose fight in this but that was the that was the second fight i stopped on and going down the list and I, I wanted to ask you guys i even asked you live billy on one of the shows that you were doing about that fight remember but yeah, that, moving on yeah. Oh, can My I hear, can I talk way. about this guy real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, so I actually uh can you put the visual up right now? I actually just seen Gene Silver right now. He was on his way walking to Denver because that's how slow that motherfucker be walking to the cage. So you definitely know he's gonna be ready for this one. I actually think too he had to take this fight just because you know he did miss weight in that last fight. So I think it's one of those things to where the UFC said, hey. You did a. We're doing a favor for you. You got to do a favor for us. Let's go ahead and take this fight up in a different weight class. So you know, I think it's kind of one of those things to where you know he's helping out the company in here. But I like Jane Silver in this spot, man. Take him off. Let me get my screen on now. I think he's gonna go out here and finish Drew Dober, man. Drew Dober's been tested, man. The fight resume on him <laughs> is there. Uh, the striking is there. The finish ability on Drew Dober is there. But. He's already been there too many times, man. We seen him. Take this hit. Take this hit. Remember that war with Rafael Alves? I do. And by the way, if y'all didn't see Rafael Alves just knock out James Vick on Karate Combat, wow, go Google it. But, but getting get back to this one, I like Gene Silver in this spot, man. And it's up in a different weight class, too. Drew Dober's path to victory. Use the wrestling and get Gene Silver down. But I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to stand out there and strike. And if he does... Man, I think Gene Silva's going to knock his ass out in the second round. Did, did he impress you guys in this fight? Were you guys already on him? Like, and that didn't I was impress already you. on him. Good saying, good game to you guys. One of the biggest things that yeah. we're flowing on this year's podcast is saying this person doesn't have this level of experience of competition. Just watch the film. Can the person strike or the, is the person good? Like they're just, you can only beat the person that's in front of you. And sometimes right. I feel like these step up, step up and level of competitions aren't really the step up and level of competition. It's just the right direction that the career is going. Like, it, like if you told me three years from now, we see Jim's Gene Silva and the names that he has on his record, like it could be just be really impressive. Like this could just be one of those fighters that you rather have been on early. Cause uh, he might not be fighting at that same exact weight class at 145. Like this might just be his, weight class like uh remember what they did with comms they had him at two different weight right. on back exactly. weeks just to see like which one he looks better in um I, they, the ufc loves to fight nerds man remember last year contender series from last year's contender series to this year bro i feel like oh, everybody in that fucking gym has gotten the opportunity and that's one of the better gyms in Brazil. It's not like those old school gyms that was good like 10 years ago that still got good fighters. It's those up and coming new gyms and fighting nerds is one of the ones to where, man, they got some good fighters out there, man. Cold main event time, though. Because me, me and TC both had legs on Jordan. How how fat? How fat? Oh, what, could, point, at, what, point at, yeah, what, what point of time? Let me finish before you get your diss in. At what point of time? DC, did you like, oh, we fucked up. <laughs> I mean, maybe 35, 35 yeah. seconds of Nikki, a good yeah, Nikki. Say, uh, six milliseconds into the fucking fight, like immediately yeah. fight started. Yeah. Fuck, what have I done? Uh, yeah. But yeah, just, just yeah, that's, that's, and that's, that's the thing. Fucking with me. It's fucking with me here, too, because it's like Jordan had never been finished. Dober's been knocked out a couple times. Durability's starting to wane a little bit. So it's like, could just be another John Silva knockout. So I just don't think it's going to the cards. But I can totally see John Silva trying to get Dober up out of there, drops him, tries to get the finish, doesn't. And it just could be – I've seen Dober do that a few times. So, yeah, I think one of them's getting chin. Ponzinibbio versus Alakoff. TC, I'll start with you. No, I don't think it does. But if it if it does hit the cards, it won't shock me. This is like the least confident does not hit the cards one for me. But this is another one. Both of these guys' durability is starting to go. Salakov's 40. So it's like it's a pass for me, man. Like, but I think one of them probably gets I think it's probably the worst fight you've ever seen. That and then all of a sudden, boom, one of them gets clipped. Mills. Man, in this one. It's crazy that this is the fucking co-main event fight. 
Like, how is this the co-main event? It's like, wild, you know, bro. What are these two? Whoever loses this fight is getting cut. Like, how is this the co-main? <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy, man. Um, but then again, we are coming off of a co-main event where Carl Williams fought somebody this year. So I mean, hey, man, I guess it is what it is, man. Um Ponzinil Bio looked good in his last fight out against Kevin Holland. I had a bet on him. He was looking good. I was on the podcast fucking doing the jinx. Mills talk. Oh, you fucking and jinx, Houston. dude. And the, the man I started doing the Mills talk, oh, yeah, this and that, this and that. And then, boom, he got knocked out. Am I surprised? No, it happens to me all the time. Watch the live streams over here on Pup Sports Radio every Saturday. <laughs> um, but um, I've been a Kung Fu Panda fan, man. Muslim Salikov, man, has been one of my guys, man. Um, I've been betting him, and he's been profitable with me. And I think I'm just now getting to the point to where, you know, I'm still up on betting on him. I got to go back to the window with him one more time in here, man. I think he can mix in the wrestling a little bit, make this a little bit easier fight. Um, He's been training at elevation, too, uh, putting in the time in for this camp, too. So, you know, he's not going to be out there looking like a fish out of water. Um, He is slowing down, though. It does. It does. Uh, You know, I do notice that. But I'm going back to the window, man, with uh, Muslim Salikov. Really? This is one that I feel a little bit oddly confident on. Um, I'm going to be real with you, bro. We've been making mad money fading Muslim Sayakov. Uh, the last couple fights that he's had has been cash cows, bro. We Remember we're on the podcast? We have me, motherfucker. Like, like not we. Not, not we. We, had Randy Brown. we had I had Randy Brown in the fight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've been losing. We <laughs> you were on the fucking stream, and I said plus 600 for Randy Brown by Knockout has got to be one of the best bets of the whole entire card. What happens? He walked over across the cage and shot one, two punch, and the dude dropped. Who the fuck does Rainy Brown do that to? Not mm. a whole lot of people, bro. I definitely think the durability has been on the decline for Muslim Saikov. He's more of like a seven and a half minute fighter. He looks good in the first five minutes. Once the second round starts going, he starts really showing up. He throws way too much spinning bullshit. And don't let the OV name fool you. The motherfucker's not looking to go for a takedown or wrestle. I think Santiago Ponzinibbio is the much cleaner, much better technical striker in this spot. And if this hits the judges' scorecards, I think he throws more volume. The more and more I think about this, I feel like I'm breaking myself out. I feel like Santiago Ponzinibbio should blow through Muslim Sayakov in this spot. But who has the better nickname? Who has the better nickname? Kung Fu Panda? Come on now. Who has the better nickname? Kung Fu. What, what is what is Ponzinibbio's Kung like Panda. Argentine dagger? Argentina, Argentina dagger. I mean, did that. Kung Fu Panda. That's it. Mic drop. Go ahead. Tell, tell them how you feel too, Sam. So like, the, I know I, I kind of touched on it a little bit, but it, it's it's weird. You would think that Ponzi would, would do what Billy said. You'd think he'd run right through him, but like. He's been knocked out more times. Like, Ponzinibbio is a chinny dude. Like, that's why I can't bet him. I'm going to pick him to win. I'm, I'm on Ponzinibbio, but not confidently enough. I, I, I know minus 205 isn't insane, but, like, no, he's the younger dude, but he's been clipped more. But Salikov's durability is going downhill to me, and he's the older guy. So, like, while he's tempting as a dog – I can't do it, man. I'm, it's just a pass, but I think one of them is going to get clipped. Like, like they both kind of swing for the fences, dude. Ponzi's a little bit more like composed, but he he'd be fucking chucking them bricks too, man. So I think one of them gets clipped at some point. But I think it's like it's not. It's a fight that should have happened like three or four years ago. But like, it, I don't know. Man. Hopefully, it's good. the added what two said said no nah, facts. It should have happened three years ago. It's like, do I bet on the dude at plus money that's the older fighter and has less experience than the favorite? Like, it, if this if this didn't have a price tag connected to it, who the fuck would you be picking? And like you said, he he got face planted yeah. by a double jab right hand from Randy Brown. Just yeah. boom, just like I don't know if I'm betting it yet. Like I said, the pick I'm picking the Muslim, but I don't know if I'm getting to the window with them, man. Because yeah, that that's hard to go with. The main event, boys, Rose Nami Yunez versus Tracy Cortez. Mills, I know you're a fan of one of these fighters. Go ahead. Yo, man, I'm going to tell you like this. There's three Gs in life, and you got to stick to them. And I stick to your gut. I stick with your guns. And I stick with your girls. 
and that's Tracy Cortez in this spot, man. Let me introduce y'all to this, man. 2018, that's when I got put onto her in Invicta. Over a win against, what, Kaylin O'Neal or somebody, I want to say? Man, since then, been following her, and I've been making money on her, man. She's my most profitable better out there in women's MMA. Why? Because I ain't never lost on her. We're talking about a girl who has a win over Aaron Blanchfield. We're talking about Tracy Cortez. 11 and 0 fight win streak right now. Fighting out of the best gym out there in Arizona, one of the best gyms in MMA. Fight ready. She got the coaches, she got the trainers, she got the training partners. Not just that, she put in the time. Last year or a year and a half ago, she took some time off in Brazil, went to the pit bull camp, improved her striking. And did she put that on display? Oh, yes, she did against Jasmine Jordas Vicious. She wasn't going for the takedowns, you know, wasn't doing none of that. But her striking looked like it improved dramatically. I got Tracy Cortez in this spot. Played her out of plus 190. Listen, look, hear me out. I think she finishes her inside the distance. She knows it's her time. She was supposed to be facing Miranda Maverick a week later. She got the call. She hit the coach up. She said, I got to take this chance right now. I don't know if I ever get this opportunity. And after I get this win... I'm fighting for that belt, and I'm fighting for that gold. I think this is it, man. I've been backing her. I actually think she has a path to victory on here. I'm not going to discredit anything against Rose Namajunas at all. I just got to back the fighter that I've been betting on and backing, and the price is right. I've been betting her as a big favorite. I doubled up on her in spots. Now I'm getting her at a plus 190. Man, give me that all day. I think Tracy Cortez is going to win this fight and then fight Alexa Grasso at the Sphere. You heard it here. Now you heard that show on Arrowani show off the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. So this is like one of the hardest things of like philosophy. The hardest. Like, the hardest. No diddy. Let me explain. This Let me is explain. the hardest thing for me to gonna, gonna have to watch. Things, no, no, not even. One of the hardest things in philosophy and MMA is Betting on the fighter that you don't think is better, but they could just be better that one night. Like, the resumes are not even comparable. The film, this is not – all the film boys are going to tell you, oh, yeah, Rose Bonnie Yunus at minus 300. That's a good price tag. Uh, she's probably going to win the fight – or the common breakdown. She will win the fight, but I don't know if I want to bet it. I would take a Rose by decision or an over four and a half. Well, you know what I got to tell you, bro? Rose, the I love Thug Rose. One of the biggest women's MMA bets I ever cashed in my life. Started knocking out Wei Jang at like plus one seventy. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. Never forget that shit. But man, she's leaves the one criticism I'll say. She's leaving the back door open for the judges to kind of decide a little bit of these fights. I had Amanda Rivas as a big dog against Rosemary Yunus in that last one, and I thought. I knew that we lost, but there was a chance that I thought we could have won on the judges' scorecards. Like, if you look at that fight in hindsight, like, she got ragdolled. She got ragdolled. The takedowns were there. Amanda Rebos won a couple of rounds. Did she win enough rounds? Probably not, to be honest with you. But the rounds that she won, man, fuck Amanda Rebos. Tracy Cortez is better than Amanda Rebos. Like, if she can do some of the stuff – and take some of the stuff that she already does and take some of the stuff that we've seen exploitable on Rose's film. You're telling me the bookies are sitting here at the end of the fucking night with a minus 300 women's MMA parlay liability, and I'm not going to have a Tracy Cortez dog shot? The, stick with the it's three all, keys. It's all the pricing life. for me, too. Fun. It's all the pricing for me, guts. too. This is stick with your fucking girls man and you guys stick with your girls this is definitely one of those ones is bill going in for a third week in a row for an underdog main event l probably so but nigga i'm gonna catch one of them <laughs> i mean uh, mills you didn't answer the the, the distance part but would you take if these lines were flipped yeah if these lines were flipped would you take rose at plus 180 even so i'm gonna just be honest with you i i just couldn't the best. Because I've been, I couldn't been, either. That's what I'm saying, and I'm a giant Rose fan, so I just couldn't because uh, somebody who's won money with me five, six, seven straight times, I gotta go until you lose for me two times back to back. You know, so that's just, just my rule. No, it just doesn't, be bad. <laughs> like, it no, doesn't the matter. The one is the one though. Like that one shifted my whole shit, but and I'm, I'm glad 
fight happened though. My bad on this, and then I get the two. But because she was gonna be fighting Miranda Maverick, two fighters who you know are kind of be like, man, I don't want to pick on this one. You know, interview Maverick. You know, <laughs> like, well, what do I? You know, so I'm happy. You want to be the camera guy, but you don't want to be the guy with action on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. TC. I know you a big Rose Namunas fan, probably like my boy Big Show over here. You know what I mean? So, uh, no, not at all. Got it. No, I mean, <clears throat> I wouldn't say. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's weird, man. I'm kind of indifferent towards Rose. I wouldn't say I hate her. Definitely not a fan, but like, Ooh, as far as a fighter, you. she's a she's a really yeah. good fighter. Okay. Um, and a, she's a fighter that like sometimes I'm right picking her, and sometimes I'm wrong. So I'm not like the I'm not gonna say I'm the best like Rose Nama Eunice like whisper or anything. And I definitely I don't know, man. I haven't been doing good lately picking her. It feels like it hits the cards though, man. It feels like a decision either way. I don't think either one of them's getting finished. I think it's a Rose decision. Not Big very show. confidently. Like everything y'all are saying is true. What Billy said is a good point about like, yeah, on paper it's Rose all day, like the championship experience. Tracy Cortez doesn't have any of that. Her best wins probably Aaron Blanchfield in in Victor or whatever a little while back. Right. Um, but yeah, I can see if any look if it hits the cards and it's close, it's gonna be a split, man. Like the, one of the judges at least is gonna give it to Tracy. So like, I'm tempted to put Rose in a parlay, but like, no thanks. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pick Rose by decision, but. That's it. That's all I got. Big Show, you playing any flags on this? Nah, the last time she fought, I planted a flag, and that didn't work out well for me. So, like I said, it's it's all about the price tag to me. I don't want to. She's still she's still one of my favorite fighters. This is not a fight I want. I want to see it, but I don't want to see it, if that makes sense. Right. Got it. Cool. I, I can see them robbing. Rose. Yeah, yeah. I can see them robbing Rose with that fucking Tracy Cortez booty. Yeah. No. Low key, bro. I, I, this is one of the rare times I'll say this. Besides last week's three or three event, this main event was way better than what the fuck they had before. <laughs> like this is this is way better. I watched Tracy Cortez Rose body use fight for twenty five minutes. Yeah, it was gonna be All Rose versus right, Barber. So I, I, I else like got anything to, any anybody got anything else to wrap up the main event before we go to commercial and get to the grease. Nah, like I said, man, I've been putting it out there. So um, Tracy Cortez wins inside the distance. She has no finishes in the UFC. None. She's going to get that first one, though, man, round four. Well, I also think you could kind of play a little bit of the marketability uh, side of it. The reason why Tracy Cortez usually doesn't get finishes in the UFC is because she's a pretty face, and they kind of just want to get more advertisements. Everybody's going to watch Tracy Cortez fight for 15 minutes. That has nothing to do with it, Billy. That shit was dumb as hell. How many times you watch Tracy Cortez's fight and go on social media and everybody's posting her ass on social media on that's Instagram. That's why he has no finishes. Literally every Tracy Cortez fights, everyone's like, oh, she had no run. finishes she because up. what? I think if she anybody no gets finishes, finishes Tracy Cortez. You have marketability? Well, what was that? Girl's finish. I think if uh, anybody gets finished, finished I, I think if anybody gets finished, it's Tracy Cortez. Like, she hasn't really fought any, like, super dangerous strikers unless you fucking think it's Melissa Gatto. Like, Hell Jasmine no. is, ja Jasmine striking is trash. Aaron right. Blanchfield striking is improved, but it's not like roses. Like, no, nah, you, you dead on. And it's, it's her you're fight. Plan, you're kind of playing a flag, TC. I can't, <laughs> man. I can't do that. You want to talk about someone that's been eating shit with flag plantings? Good God Almighty. Your boy has been getting his ass whooped. So, no thanks. But yeah, I think Rose. Man, well, fuck it. I'm planting the fucking flag then. I'm, I got the triple G's going and I'm planting the flag, man. I'm going to war, man, with Tracy Cortez in this spot, man. Like I said, man, she's been as advertised in there, man. 11 fight win streak in there. How does she get it done? She's going to be able to keep it on the feet. Rose Norman Nunes, this is not her weight class. This is Tracy Cortez era. This is Tracy Cortez generation right now. This is her time. I think she's going to be in there. And A, she already got acclimated to the weather and everything. Everybody's saying, oh, man, she's just taking this on short notice. She's been out there for seven to ten days training with Brandon and stuff like that. The Pony and the MMA community. We got the word. We getting the belt. We taking it home after this fight, too. Tracy Cortez is the one. A, plant your flag and stick with your girl. Stick with your gut and stick with your guns. There you go. It's Great only like a double. 
I doubled yeah. up on her. So I bet her twice. All right. So it's only right. I, I make two motherfucking claims on it, man. Right on, right Tracy on. Cortez. Work, work for sponsor. Point spread. Billy, what's the OnlyFans fade though? Uh, uh this whole card. Like, what's what's the people talking about for the OnlyFans fade? Out of all the fighters on there, I'm pretty sure some of them got OnlyFans. You know, I'm pretty sure some of them good money. Forget it. That was the OnlyFans fade of the week. Nobody clipped this. We can't clip it. It's only for the ones that watched 100 uh, an hour and 25 in. Only fans fade of the week is Jasmine Jasmine. It's just Welcome back to the locker room pod, the locker room talk podcast. It's the grease time, boys. Let's uh start throwing throwing this parlay together. First come first, though. It is about to be halftime in this Spain France game. It's two one Spain. So a little more scoring in this game than the other ones. <laughs> yeah, they got us. They got us. They- <laughs> I already knew what was up. I'm cool with it. Uh, I learned a little bit about soccer. Yeah, they got us. Who's a uh, who wants to throw out the first leg? I think Mills' idea was kind of the way I was personally thinking a little bit. Um, I have I have two ideas. I got the Gabriel Bonfim, Luana Santos, two-leg Brazilian parlay. And then I also have the uh, Luana Santos and Christian Rodriguez two-leg parlay. Minus 118. One of those two I kind of like. And the other one was Gabriel Bonfin. And uh, I think it was Gabriel Bonfin and Santiago Ponzinibbio was minus 112. One of those three was – that's what I was liking. How about I you, boys? I don't mind the Bonfin. I don't mind the Bonfin. Anybody disagreeing with that one? It is a concern that he could gas out. Like, the, wait, like wait, if Toby Oxlusive was – I, I would – it, it would not it – It's like the two chalkiest legs. I mean, I get well, it, I mean, too. I, that's I, – I, I mean, if we're talking to Bomb Theme and Santos, of course I'm inclined. I already bet that. So, like, I mean, if we, if, if that's what you guys are saying, then, of course, I'm not going to say no. Right, I'm going right. to just get back and say, let's add legs. You know, but and if you guys don't like it, I'm cool. I'm we could do something else too. That's what I'm saying. I'm that don't matter I already, you know. So I kind of like Ponzinibbio more than the Santos. And okay. I kind of like I even kind of like Montel Jackson over Santos. I do not part. Oh, I definitely like Montel Jackson over Santos. Like I, I was I was waiting to throw out Montel Jackson. Mm. That's gonna be if 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 y'all are not, if that's not unanimous, that will. Scrotes my goats be my fucking leg. So, yeah. I'm betting black. I can't bet Montel Jackson. It's gonna be hard for me to to agree to a base, but I mean that, that's fine. I can't, so, bet, I can't bet Montel that, Jackson. If, Jackson will be my leg. If the and over are, is you, that price tag is Montel Jackson, I might well just bet the over. Like I think that shit goes 15 minutes. But what about not, this? We, 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 we got to get ahead. Get ahead of ourselves. We got to get the core put together. What about Ponzinibbio and Rodriguez? I don't like Pon- that Ponzinibbio fight is too volatile for me, man. Got the dude's it. been knocked out like like Muslim Salkov. I know he's old, but he fucking hits hard, man. Ponzinibbio doesn't have a good chin. It's just I don't know. There's something about that fight is just I don't know. Just I me. think we're fucking all kind of split from what I remember going through the shit. Like we're all pretty split on everything, but the Klein. I think we are all on the Ponzinibbio side, right? And. I think the other one was the Montel Jackson. Everybody was similar, you know. Mills likes Blackshear there. I like Blackshear. I mean, I'm bad. Okay. Let's go with the Brazilian two piece, bro. I think there's a theme on the card that the Brazilians are going to come out. Me too. I just think that those two are like decent, and, or uh, or Bonfim and Ponzinibbio. I'm not mad at that, you know. Um, but I, I don't think I don't think the go for Ponzinibbio is getting the. the well, let's let's say I lock down the two leg that everybody's already. Let's let's not just go for a two leg that everybody already bet. We're all on. We all like Bonafine, right? Can we make him a yeah. piece? I'd rather have Santos. Piece does. 
I, I don't I mean, want Santos to be a piece. So. Look, I'm yeah, not going to be the one holding it up. Bro, because Shorty I was you know. homeless, bro. She was literally on Instagram a Billy, month ago. Billy, 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 Billy. Billy. all like, it's okay. You can't convince you can, other You can bet a minus 370 female as your leg, Billy. I'm just, that I'm just out loud. Like, I think that Bomb Fame and Santos win. I'm not going to be the guy that's like, no, we can't fucking do that. Because, like, I, I just – I got crushed on the last event. So, like. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm just thinking out loud. It's like it's the two chalkiest legs. It's like, yeah, I'm kind of I'm thinking the same way. No. Like, I like the Christian I hate Rodriguez. We're all on Bonafine, right? Everybody cool with Bonafine? No, yes, yes. I'm cool with Bonafine, yeah. All right, so that's one we kind of agree on. <laughs> I just can't uh, believe, yeah. like, out of all the fights that we have on a card, we're going to bet the dude that does not have the best cardio. But I'm not going to – I I think that two late cashes, bro, for real, for real, bro, the uh, Bonfine Santos. Like, I, the biggest edge for me this week is I, I just don't think – I love Maria Agapova. She's one of my favorite fighters. But, man, I don't think that she's in the right mental mindset to, to be fighting. I, I like Santos more than Bonfine, but – I like Santos more than Bonfine as well. Wow. So uh, L- listen to you guys. I like this one more than that. You guys just want to do it. Like but you like the boat. Well, like the boat. Like the boat. Like I, I don't, I don't know like this one more than that one. Like, the bump theme one like, scares me. The line's going down for a reason. Everybody knows the dude could def- if you told me he gassed out just, in round three. I'll just let me do? know when let me know what y'all want to do. I'm just I'm just, yeah, but like like we said last week, like it comes down to what's everybody going to play? Everybody going to play the parlay? And why are we taking two pieces of, you know, like. Right. <clears throat> y'all like Abdul? No, of course y'all don't. Y'all like, I'm not, y'all like Christian Rodriguez? Do you guys like. like hey, look, just stop. stop. Like just watch this. this is how we do it. I have the same exact bet as Mills. Do you guys think Christian Rodriguez right. wins his fight against Julian Arosa? Yes or no? Yes, I think Christian. I almost bet Juicy J. I, okay. You you guys try to talk me onto that. This could be a fucking wow Juicy J button. Remember the fucking little red button? Like if you wouldn't have said that, I wouldn't even have thought of that. And I'd have probably been on the Christian Rodriguez side. So. Do you guys think Gene Silva be Drew Dover? Yes or no? I like Dover there. Yeah, I'm not partly. I'm not picking that. I'm not picking that fight. I I, I, I want to lean the like I said. It's the Klein beats Jasmine Jordavicious. Yes or no? I think Klein does. I would rather partly go. Just just yes or no? Yes. Yeah, but I mean, like I'd rather. All right, well, cool. We all kind of agree upon that one fighter winning the fight. That's the only fight that we all agree upon besides Bonfim people. The so, reservation, the reservations I have, the reservations I have with Klein is that like this, this happened what, a couple weeks ago where it's like a fighter that we haven't really True. like seen. Had had enough, had enough that, that's my only reservation. That's that. That right. would be the only. Thing my question is this: right. If me and two says both said we like Santos more than Bonfin, and Mills already has the two leg like, far leg like of Santos. And I mean, if bro, it comes down to that, if, 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 go ahead and turn leg. like what? I am what are we cool. doing here? That, that's sure. what I don't understand. You guys are saying yeah. I don't like this person more than I like the other one, and it's like, wait, like they're both cute. Like it's so, oh my god, like I don't. Because like you guys are talking, more. you're. The Can't whole show, we, all right, listen, we, we all through the whole show going talking about straight bets. We don't talk about parlays the whole time we're doing this shit. So, yeah, everybody's going to be close on some and like some for straight bets, but not to put in a fucking parlay where five fucking lines, you know. And that's how we like, it's totally, it's totally different. Week, we got lucky so, last week. We almost were like this close to having Charles Jordan in that base. And I had to like preach Ian Gary, Ian Gary. Yeah, like, were, I, Mills, I wish you were here. Yeah, but you're like this like, close to having a minus 370 female in the core now. That's what I'm saying, and we've he already voted that out I in the past. Think that Maria Agapova should not be fighting inside a cage, bro. Have you looked at her Instagram in the last month, bro? She was literally on IG saying, "I'm stop, begging stop, for stop, a bro. fight from the stop. UFC." I just want to get this parlay out at this point. I don't want to. Yeah. I just want to get this yeah. parlay. Right. Out. All right, so Bonifino and Santos, Mills. Who's your who's your side piece? Um, I'll go with um. All right. 
Damn. Well, then pick another flag. Like, I, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't want to I'll pick go with, um, I'll go with, uh, with uh, Christian Rodriguez. Christian Rodriguez. Minus – or plus – 137. Billy? Montel Jackson. Montel Jackson. This is how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 165. Billy? It's Saturday night. You better tune in here for the fights because we parlaying up Ponte Nibio. <laughs> Now you see how easy this was? You see how easy, like, the whole part A gets completed in 45 seconds after. Because it's the only fucking part that matters. <laughs> it it doesn't matter what your guys, it doesn't matter what your guys' is fucking piece is if right. the core doesn't fucking win. Big Show, who's That's your what I'm going to go with Petrosky. Oh, Ooh, action. Little action. That's a good fucking line, I think I think that was just like thrown to him though. Like I think somebody just throwing it to him. You know you want to say it. You know you want to say it. <laughs> I, I think I, just I was a little bit of a rose <laughs> flag planning. I, I thought, yeah, I thought, I'm a little bit pissed, bro. We didn't get I'm no not pissed. Not, I'm just, I was just like, man, I was I was kind of. I was so surprised. Yeah, I'm like, really, no, really, what were you? Bro. What was yours? What was yours, Billy? Uh, Pontinibio. I what I said I like Pontinibio and I do like like I I, I definitely think no no, no look 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 I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys wait wait so in two cents who was yours? Montel Jackson. Fuck. All right, and then Big Show. <laughs> it's literally, yes. so, it's literally all playing, the guys we bought up. <laughs> I'm playing all the parlays except for two cents. You know what I mean? So it's like that's a good rate. Like to where I'm playing three of them out of four. Like shit, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like because I just can't play that one because I'm on black shirt. But yeah. All right, I boys, like we're already in for an hour and a half. Let's get let's get this thing out of here. TC, where can they find you? What do you got going on the rest of the week? So I am not going to be going live on my channel. The fan bam is coming into town this weekend, so I'm actually not going to be on the stream Saturday either. But I will be at the premiere tonight. I hope to see everybody there. Shout out to everyone that will watch this in the future. Shout out to the whole fucking pub, man. I will, uh, I'm will. i going to try and be in the chat as much as I can Saturday, um, but it'll probably be like kind of touch and go. But uh, best of luck to everyone. Definitely looking to get back on track. I lost two units last week, but we're still up. I am still up five units on the year. Going to get the uh, get things going in the right direction, uh, right the ship here, and uh, have a kick-ass UFC Denver. Best of luck, everybody. Billy, where can they find you? What do you got going on the rest of the week? Yeah, you can find me over on X at Getting Bills or uh, and Instagram at Billy Bridge DFS, WNBA popping right back off, NBA Summer League going off, all about the hoops. Uh, it's been a nice little run here in the WNBA, so uh, let's keep it going. Mills, send us out of here. Tell the people where they can find you and what you got going on the rest of the weekend. Send us away. Yo, man, and I know everybody got YouTube out there because that's how you're watching it. So you might as well hit that follow button right now on MMA Locker Room right there, putting on my clips with all these up-and-coming uh, fighters from promotions and doing the media and everything like that, showing you my inside, going to the live events. Check me out on the social sites too as well, Blue Check, because I'm just approved that cool. Hey, but this Saturday, this is what you need to do. Check us out at Pub Sports Radio, man. We giving out $100 to everybody who enters their picks in our contest as easy as that you become a champion even if you don't win you get a belt besides your name that's where we're going to be at everything every single saturday over here check me out though this friday though man we got an exclusive interview with uh anton ho he's going to be making his ufc debut on the dana white contender series fighting out of the mma lab uh he has some of the fastest knockouts in lfa history uh, his second time in the uh, locker room with us. So, uh, yeah, man, he's going to be fighting on the first uh, series out there. So check me out at MMA Locker Room, man. That's what you need to do. Like and subscribe. As for me, Big Show Picks on Twitter. Um, just catch us on tonight at the premiere, 11 p.m. You, well, you're already be at the premiere here in this. So if you made it this long into the premiere, shout out to you. Don't forget to hit the like button and comment below what you got going on. As for bets for the week. Good luck on everything, and let's catch these uh, Euro bets.
before this gets up here. Later, boys. <laughs>